Ladies and gentlemen, today we're diving headfirst into the Soviet Union's weirdest automotive fever dream. No, it's not a tank with a teapot on the hood. This is the tale of the Namazura 113, a vehicle so ahead of its time, the only thing more futuristic about it was the number of cigarettes smoked during its development. Picture this, 1950 USSR. Everyone's still figuring out how to build roads that aren't made entirely of potholes. And meanwhile, a bunch of brilliant maniacs at Nami build what's basically a prototype minivan with a freaking automatic transmission in Stalin's Russia, an automatic gearbox. Before we shift into gear, before we shift into gear, don't forget to subscribe to the Cool Ideas channel. Hit that button like you're trying to fix a Soviet dashboard with a wrench and a prayer. So, where do we start? Let's talk design. Nami 0113 had a monocoque wagon-style body. Rear engine layout, an independent suspension on all four wheels. In 1950, while most countries were still bolting leaf springs onto dinosaurs with steering wheels, the Soviets were dreaming of ride comfort. And not just that. The engine was supposed to be a flat four with fuel injection. But classic Soviet twist. They couldn't finish it, so they shoved in a reworked Gadget's M20 Pobeda engine delivering 63.5 horsepower at 4,100 revolutions per minute. That's right, 63.5 horses, not 63, not 64. That extra half a horse probably powered the windshield wipers. And before you ask, yes, they also developed a fully Soviet automatic transmission, the Namin Dekar, and stuck it in there like they were building cars for astronauts. But wait, the innovation didn't stop there. Nami 0113 had 13-inch discless wheels, custom designed because Apparently, standard wheels just weren't radical enough. Radiator in the bumper, three rows of seats, a compact body shorter and lighter than the bulky Gaz 12 Zim, but still seating an entire family, their luggage, a goat, and at least three state secrets. And remember, this thing was built not for production, but for testing and flexing. It hit the streets for test runs from 1950 to 1953, constantly tweaked and rebuilt. By 1954, it was quietly dismantled, possibly because it was too good, too weird, or too confusing for the Ministry of Automotive Mediocrity. Now, a few juicy details for the car nerds in the back. It was rear-wheel drive, had a 4x2 wheel formula, used an independent suspension system, and featured a radiator shoved into the front bumper, like a Soviet engineer's version of Why Not? The car was affectionately nicknamed Cheetah. No one really knows why, but let's be honest, Every Soviet project had a nickname more charming than its actual function. It was praised in 1955 by the British magazine Motor, who wrote, The Nami 013 is an example of very advanced technical thinking. Only one Nami 0113 was ever built. Just one. And if it had gone into production, it might have changed the entire trajectory of the Soviet car industry. But instead, it ended up as a historic footnote. So what's left of Nami 13? Memories, black and white photos, scale models, and a question. What if the Soviets had built minivans before America did? And hey, if you want to support the Cool Ideas channel for just one dollar, become a sponsor. That's less than the cost of a Moscow Metro token, and way less than what Timmy spends on Miracle Engine Cleaner made of pickle juice and hope. Links down in the description. Go on, make our fuel-injected dreams come true.